Bobby Knight of Big Ten champion Indiana, irreverent to some, yet undeniably devoted to success. Against LSU's dynamic Dale Brown, the preacher man, the emotional leader of the SEC champions. Brown versus Knight, the final four. NBC Sports presents the 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. Today, from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's Indiana against LSU. Brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealers who want to keep America rolling right now. By Bell System Yellow Pages. Take the first step. Let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. By Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Goodyear, makers of Arriva. Even its footprint tells you it's different. To Philadelphia Spectrum, they have come from Carolina and Virginia, from Louisiana, and from Indiana. They have come from the tobacco lands and the bayous. They have come from the heartlands and the Atlantic seashore. They have come to the Spectrum for what is considered the most exciting day in American sport, the semifinals of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brian Gumbel speaking to you from the floor of the Spectrum, where today will be contested an NCAA Championship doubleheader. In the first game, it'll be Indiana champions of the Big Ten going against LSU champions of the Southeast Conference. And in our second big double header it is Virginia with Ralph Sampson his towering presence at 7-4 champions of the regular season in Atlantic Coast Conference going against the tournament champions down there the North Carolina Tar Heels their third meeting it's a very big day I'll be with you throughout the day with highlights and some features and calling it from courtside let's go to our trio Dick Enberg Billy Packer and Al McGuire gentlemen thank you Brian it is a great day and it's pleasing for all of us to be sharing it with you you can take the World Series and Wimbledon and the Super Bowl that's one event the semifinal so the collegiate basketball tournament, you see one great game and then another to follow. And we're glad you're going to be with us throughout the afternoon. With me, Al McGuire and Billy Packer. Coach, you've always said that this is the pinnacle, the ultimate for a coach to get just to the Final Four. This is the place. Every grade school, high school, college, and even pro coach dreams about performing in the Final Four. This is it. All right, now let's talk about the two teams. You're Bobby Knight of Indiana. How do you beat LSU today? Bobby Knight, first of all, has to get a slow whistle from the officials, a pro whistle. He wants to play underneath, make a football game out of it. Second, they want to play half court, 47 street feet, pick, screen down. Isaiah Thomas must penetrate in the middle and dish off. And finally, they must get LSU in foul trouble. Their bench is short. You were on 47th Street. Let's go to Main, Main Street in LSU down there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Dale Brown, the preacher man. How is he going to beat the Hoosiers? Well, Dick, this is a club of super athletes. Even beyond basketball, they are great athletes. The matchups today are going to be a key. You've got Landon Turner going against Rudy Macklin. I think Macklin may be a little quick for him. we got to watch that early. And Ethan Martin, Isaiah Thomas is going to be one of the classic matchups we've ever had in the Final Four. The way that goes, the first couple of minutes is going to be the key. For LSU, they got a great delay game. If they were to get ahead of Indiana, I think Indiana could have some serious trouble. This is going to be two super clubs out there. LSU and Indiana both got here with impressive wins. No one really challenged them in their first three victories. It's Indiana's defense, LSU's great running game, and we'll meet the starting lineups this first game of the semifinals in just a moment. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. Introducing the starting lineups for today's semifinal game. For Indiana, at a forward, number 30. A 6'8 junior from Galveston, Indiana, Ted Kitchell. For LSU, at a forward, number 40. A 6'7 senior from Louisville, Kentucky, Rudy Macklin. For Indiana, at a forward, number 32. A 6'10 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Landon Turner. For LSU, at a forward, number 24. A 6'7 freshman from St. Martinville, Louisiana, Leonard Mitchell. For Indiana at center, a 6'9 senior from Anderson, Indiana, Ray Tolbert. For LSU at center, number 43, a 6'9 senior from Roselle, New Jersey, Greg Cook. For Indiana at a guard, number 11, a 6'1 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Isaiah Thomas. For LSU at a guard, number 21, 
a six foot senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Ethan Martin. For Indiana at a guard, number 24, a 6'6 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Randy Whitman. And for LSU at a guard, number 32, a 6'5 sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Howard Carter. The head coach for the Indiana Hoosiers, Bobby Knight. And the head coach for the LSU Tigers, The head coaches meet at midcourt. Dale Brown's LSU Tigers got here with wins over Lamar, Arkansas, and Wichita State. Closest anyone came was 11. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers won by an average of 27 points in their three victories. The opening tip-off coming up. LSU Tigers, and we'll keep our eye on All-America second team Rudy Macklin at Ford. He has that dislocated little finger right hand, non-shooting hand. We'll see if it affects his play today. Indiana's not without its own injury problems. Number 24, Randy Whitman, you'll see, has a bandaged right, make that left thigh, wearing a football thigh pad over that thigh, and he is not 100%. Two key starters will be playing with injuries today. The Tigers of LSU in white. The crimson-clad Hoosiers of Indiana. There's Macklin, his uh, right little finger bandaged, but it didn't seem to bother him yesterday. In fact, he's taken off the bandage. Tolbert and Mitchell, and the freshman Mitchell won the tap. Ethan Martin, number 21 with the ball, the playmaker. Cook, Mitchell, the freshman. Outside, Macklin. Howard Carter, everyone's touched the ball. Inside to Mitchell, and LSU leads two to nothing. You can see the patience. Everybody talks about LSU being a club that just throws it up. They've got a lot of patience, and here is Tolbert bringing the ball up the court against the press. Randy Whitman, Isaiah Thomas, the All-American as a sophomore. Tolbert, Bobby Knight said the most valuable player in the Big Ten this year. Thomas, Landon Turner ties it up for the Hoosiers. Both teams have scored on their first possession. That's got to be important to the two coaches. It's a good sign. It gets them off the nine. Coaches dream about before a game like this that they might never score for the whole 40 minutes. 2-2 two, two the score. One minute gone. Ethan Martin around Thomas and Ooh. scores it. It counts. step before he got off that on Thomas. Fine move. I believe he didn't walk, Billy. Yep. Very quick feet. They're so quick sometimes he gets away with one of those Chinese steps. Yep, he really did walk. Uh, good move inside, then he put it up. He's a powerful little kid. Got it off inside. Ethan Martin averaged almost 12 points a game on the year. And the senior from Baton Rouge completes the three-point play. 5-2 to two LSU. 1-2-1-1-4 zone trap now. What the people mightn't realize that LSU has tremendous delay game, one of the best in the country. For some reason, people throughout the country feel, feel that they're kind of running gun. And pass by Isaiah and Mitchell, Thomas. And then Mitchell throws it away trying to feed Cook. And Cook pointed to the basket, as did Brown, to say, go ahead and shoot that yourself. I can't believe Isaiah threw that pass just up in the air, knowing you've got the trap man Mitchell back here to pick it off. Ray Tolbert down court to Turner. Indiana beats the press, and it's 5-4 to four LSU. With that kind of press, he who hesitates is lost. That time, Mitchell had a chance to go after him. Tolbert didn't get there quick enough. Rudy Macklin traveled. It'll be Indiana the other way. They must protect their backcourt under this press. Bobby Knight will go through this like Epsom salts. Now they go back to straight man-to-man -man pressure. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Soaked for a while. Isaiah Thomas posting up Ethan Martin inside. Isaiah Thomas in Indiana takes the lead for the first time, six to five. That could be a problem for LSU because Thomas can play down inside. Ethan Martin would rather have him out. Greg Cook hits great shooting off the opening bell, and LSU is in front by one. Two minutes gone, seven to six. We saw some tournament games uh, the last couple of weeks where it wasn't seven to six until 10 minutes were gone. Turner's been hot. Misses that one, rebound out to Macklin. Around Isaiah Thomas. 
Ethan Martin, Howard Carter, and a miss for LSU, Thomas rebounding. This is Kitchell. I tell you, the game's going at LSU's pace right now, and I'm surprised that Indiana's allowed to get it into a run-shoot game. Foul is on Ethan Martin. Let's go back to Isaiah Thomas in action. Here's what he did. He posted up Ethan Martin inside. Now, Martin, of course, is used to having a man out in the perimeter area and got caught behind the screens. You'll notice one of those grunt plays I was talking about. Bobby got about five guys, six foot eight, that screened down, and they throw tremendous picks, which frees uh, Isaiah Thomas. Here's his zone for the first time by LSU, 2-3. And there's the zone buster, Ted Kitchell on that side. Randy Whitman into the alley. Rebound, Cook rips it off for LSU. And here come the Tigers, leading 7-6. to six. We've played three minutes of this first half. North Carolina and Virginia play it in the second game. There's that double low post by LSU. Rudy Macklin was way short, and Turner got the rebound for Indiana. He becomes foul prone. Watch how soon he's up to the air. Someone can step in his way, and it's an automatic charge. Yeah, Ed Mitchell was right. Good call. That's his second. Two quick ones here. We've got a, he about only three minutes to go. We'll see him out. Billy, he should kept it on the yo-yo, kept dribbling, and commit himself maybe a half a step later. Now Isaiah Thomas playing with two early fouls. No move by Bobby Knight to replace him. Ethan Martin scores. Well, there's a wide senior. Right away took the ball. To what they did, Dick, they set a clear up. A clear out out for Ethan Martin, and they gave him a whole side of the court. Isaiah's going to really have to be careful in that move. Inside, it's over. Beautiful block, but a foul on Leonard Mitchell of LSU. They call him SWAT, and he just performed that uh, to the letter. You can see that both coaches are using what they have to right here. We'll see this play over again. Tolbert takes it inside. That's an important block. Excuse me, I think that was Cook that, um, that blocked that, no? no? No, it was Mitchell that made the block, 24. And Mitchell got the foul. This is Ray Tolbert, the senior. Watch for Bobby Knight to change assignments. We might see Whitman go over and play Ethan Martin to keep Isaiah Thomas from picking up that third one. And you notice how they're a little bit leery of Martin's ability to steal the ball, so Whitman's been handling it most of the time. Uh, Martin take Whitman to school. He's too quick for Whitman. Well, let's see if they make the change. Game is tied at nine. Well, Tolbert makes one out of two. Back to the double low post. Carter did a good job of saving, but he traveled in doing so. Excellent call, then. The Indiana bench. Bobby Knight, who has won this tournament as a player or a member of the Ohio State Championship team of 1960. And also, of course, in 1976. Notice Russell they won't Fisher send Cook team. out at Ray there. If Tobit moves to the outside, Cook will not come out with him. Doing a lot of posting up on Ethan Martin inside. They want Isaiah Thomas to get him down low. Here he is. And Martin took it away, but it went to Turner. Landon Turner picked up the deflection. He has six points. First. Here's how these two teams made their way to Philadelphia for the Final Four. LSU beating Lamar, Arkansas, Wichita State, all handily. Indiana, they averaged, as we said earlier, 27 points margin on each of their victories over Maryland, Alabama, Birmingham, and St. Joe's of Pennsylvania. The only team that broke out in the sweat was Virginia. In each one of their three games, they were losing at, uh, during the second half. Great puck from outside. Cook really pushed off on Kitchell that time to get the ball. Four points, and that ties it at 11. Four and a half minutes have been played. But this is something to watch right here. Thomas and Martin, head up. Tolbert draws Cook. There's Thomas. Rebound goes to Howard Carter. Oh, what a move by Martin to go by. Martin went right by Isaiah Thomas. Martin into the alley, just can't hit it. Rebound. 
Oh, Thomas almost over the back. He wisely pulled off. Carter and a foul on Carter of LSU for charging. But that's the first time in this playoff series that Indiana has seen somebody just go to the boards with him and take it away offensively. And we have a timeout here in the Spectrum in Philadelphia. This first semifinal game between Indiana, the Big Ten, and LSU of the SEC is tied at 11. the score with five minutes and seven seconds gone. Both teams shooting very well from the floor. That certainly is not a typical pattern in the importance of this game and as testimony to the talent of LSU and Indiana. Dick, both of these teams have held their opponents down. Indiana holding their opponents to 44 percent shooting percentage normally. Uh, so this is certainly not a pattern for them. Well, what happens in the final four, you're not as nervous, Bill. You're so pleased that you got here. You played looser than you do during the regular tournament. Oh, there he is. Ethan Martin, and it's deflected off Isaiah Thomas. But you got to remember with Ethan Martin, he won't play Thomas close. He drops off his man. He plays like a wild card. He gets into the lanes, the casting lanes. Ethan Martin with a ball, the senior leader of this LSU team, and he takes it to the hoop. Tipped up by Macklin, rebounded by Turner. Point for LSU for Macklin to get out of the box. He's had everything go around the rim and out. Randy Whitman scores for Indiana. He now has his first bucket. 15-foot shot for Randy Whitman is like a layup for anyone else. Indiana back in front by two. Biggest lead of this first half, three points, LSU. Try to get Macklin open. Leonard Mitchell can't hit. Rebound, Kitchell. Thomas feeds it down court to Whitman. There's that 15-footer. Rebound, Cook of LSU. Here come the Tigers, two on two. He's going by him. Parser can't hit it. Rebound, Kitchell. Thomas the other way. No advantage, so he pulls it up. But probably not too far away from the best six man in basketball coming in. Willie Sims, number 10 of LSU, the senior. No basket. Foul is on LSU. Greg Cook. You'll notice on that play that Rudy Macklin was trying to protect baseline side and came whipping around on Kitchell, but he got caught with an excellent feed pass down in low. Here's Macklin's work at the other end of the court, number 40. Macklin was a little bit upset. Landon Turner's been keeping him under wraps pretty well. You notice he can't beat him to the spot. Doing a good job defensively. Macklin has not scored yet. Indiana, one of the true man-to-man -man defensive teams. Not many clubs go strictly man-to-man, -man, but that's Bobby Knight's defense. And many feel coming into the tournament, it's one of the real advantages. You have to play Knight. He on Macklin for holding, and that'll send Landon Turner to the line. And you notice Rudy Macklin's holding his hand, Dick. He reached in there with the right hand. And, of course, being dislocated just a week ago, we'll see it here. Now, watch, you're going to reach in with the right hand. See that finger up? At the line, Landon Turner, 6'10", junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Turner, a nine-point average as you see Macklin on the line. to 11. Indiana opens its biggest lead. And what a fine free throw shooting team Indiana is. They shoot 74 percent, but with the exception of Turner, they, every guy in that squad is just a real fine free, free throw shooter. Yeah, Turner shoots 68 percent. He's the worst of them all. Inside to Macklin, turn around, banks it in. It's 14-13. Macklin is first points. That, you see Dale Brown giving a sigh of relief there because he had not had his superstar off the mark. Well, what happens, Billy? Uh, he's turned a six foot ten. Talbert can't hit. Rebound, okay. Cook. They'll give him that shot. Cook, the big center, brings it up. <laughs> Leonard Mitchell got there. What a tip, Macklin. This is again. He's missed three offensive chances and a foul.
Mitchell of Indiana, his second. We see Willie Sims coming in the game. That super six man, Kitchell reaching in. I'll tell you what's happening. LSU just getting off the floor too quick against Indiana. Here he is. He backs Turner down. He's got the great quickness on that turnaround jump shot. Uses the board well. So Willie Sims, number 10, the sixth man, and some say the best man off the bench in college basketball. The senior is in. And at the line, freshman Leonard Mitchell. He has two points in the game. When you say athletes, probably the best first six men on any team as far as athletes are LSU. Yep. They can they can run, they can jump, they can post, they, they got the whole package. Now this is the only weak part of Mitchell's game. This guy's one of the top freshmen in the country. He didn't make our all first five, but he certainly is one of those that was under consideration. Well, the game is tied at 14 as Mitchell gets one out of two. We'll be picking the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player later in the game, $1,000 to that player's university. Boy, Cook's not even coming out at all. Andre Tober. Tober's going to have to pick up some slack. Well, he's going to have to shoot from the outside. Ted Kitchell, he had 40 points in the Illinois game. Misses that shot. Mitchell rebounds. Martin ahead to Macklin. He wants it. He's got it. You know, he seems to shoot the ball off the back of his hand, the palm of his hand, not the fingertips. That usually comes from a ball player starting too young. And the basket being at 10 feet, when it's so six or seven years of age, instead of shooting the ball, they throw it. LSU in the lead by two. Two teams that can really play some great man-to-man -man defense. They have such good athletes, good fundamentals. They really stick you. Indiana three times the national champion. 1940, 1953 under Branch McCrack in those years. And then Bobby Knight, so she's won it in 76. This is LSU's second trip to the Final Four. They were here in 53 when Indiana defeated them. A fine tap. Excellent timing. Ray Tolbert's going to have to shoot from the outside. The cookie man's playing back in the paint. He has to put it up. Tied again at 16. There's Macklin down low posting again. That's, that's surprising, Billy, because Macklin's 6'7". He's posting the guy 6'10". Of course, combines that great quickness when he gets down there also. Willie Sims, his first shot not there. And a bounds to LSU. Sims did a good job of battling Isaiah Thomas for the rebound and won the out of bounds for the Tigers. I think it's the first time I've seen somebody on the offensive board just dominate Indiana. Great block. So Rudy Macklin is rejected. Turner and Tolbert were in there to bat it away. Tied at 16. We played nine minutes. Leonard Mitchell way short. And off Kitchell, and then it was touched by Macklin. So it's the Hoosiers going the other way. You notice no one says anything to the freshman. That wasn't a great shot, but they just keep their cool. LSU's a very mature club. They got two guys that have been around for five years, Cook and Macklin. That maturity means so much in the NCAA. You gotta take it, Ray. That's it. Cover. That was a good shot either. So like kind. Don't Mitchell make any difference, up. Billy. He has to take it to keep them honest. Macklin at the other end is short. Comes off to Martin. And the foul is on Martin for charging. Rudy Macklin keeps looking down at that finger. I don't know if that's causing the trouble, but he has not gotten anything to drop at all for him. There he is holding the finger again. So Ethan Martin has two fouls. The two star guards, Martin of LSU and Thomas of Indiana, with two fouls here in the first half. And Tolbert going to sit down, Dick. And to replace him, number 34 for the Hoosiers, Steve Risley, 6'8", senior from Indianapolis. Risley to Grizzly. Find it. Sims can play some pretty fair defense, too. Good patience by Indiana. Good change on defense by Coach Dale Brown. When Martin picked up his third, he put him on Whitman and ended up putting Sims on Isaiah. They have a blocking foul against Risley of Indiana. There's Tolbert, the man for whom Risley has come in. And now, just a quick breather, and Tolbert's going to be reinserted into the lineup. Dick, I think that foul's on Kitchell. We'll get the official word on that, but right now we have a break. Ten minutes and seven seconds left in this first half at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Semifinals of the NCAA. And it's
it's even at 16. Game has been tied five times, even at 16. The last foul was on Ted Kitchell of Indiana. Ten minutes and seven seconds left in this first half. LSU has been dominant on the boards. That's a big statistic, but they are down or in a tie game because they've also turned it over more than Indiana. And surprisingly, they haven't been able to take advantage of those offensive rebounds. Very few of them have been put back up and in. The foul on Kitchell was his third. Stolen by Turner. Off to Thomas. Isaiah. Rebound Macklin, who hustled down court. Martin the other way. Boise quick. Turner to Thomas. Hoosiers trying to break the tie. Whitman. Tolbert loses it to Macklin. That's a good hold up by Cook. The game getting a little scattered there. What's happening to Ethan Mark? He's driving down the lane so much so easily that he's taking some bad shots in there. Lob pass to Mitchell. They use the left hand to score. Excellent pass by Mott. I think what's happening when he's driving, Billy, he's dropping his head, not keeping his eye on the rim. That's how come he missed about three or four, not chippies, but semi-chippies. And it tough shots when he goes in there with the trees. Well, that Martin seems to be playing off his man, Thomas, and as soon as he thinks that pass is coming, he darts in front. Randy Whitman. Out it came to Martin, two on two. Well, he is going right by people. To Sims, and again, Martin with the assist. That's the biggest lead of the game for LSU, 20 to 16. He's unemotional. You know when you're in one of the lanes with you, he's going to dish it off. He's going to give you the ball inside the paint. A chance to examine the LSU defense from overhead. See how they leave Ray Tolbert out there? Thomas to Whitman. Tolbert moving outside. Good defensive positioning by Cook. Macklin will also lay off uh, Beasley. Isaiah Thomas sits from the baseline. Six points for Thomas. Eight minutes left in the first half. LSU leads by two. Greg Cook gets. So Cook has hit two from up around 20 feet. Dick, what's uh, happening right there is the fact that they were going to have that double low post that Cook hadn't even gotten in position yet. Thomas, the other end, and he banks it home. 22-20, the All-American, Isaiah, leading the Hoosiers with eight. Martin better find out he can't wander too far away from Thomas, because Isaiah will spread it. Macklin inside, and it's out of bounds to Indiana. Macklin shuffled his feet that time. Fortunate it wasn't a walk. And Bobby Knight wanted a charge. Landon Turner doing a superb job on Rudy Macklin so far because he's really holding him down. Willie Sims goes out for LSU. And the starting five back intact as Howard Carter returns for the Tigers. And they go zone. First time they've been zoned, but it wasn't an out of bounds situation. Indiana looking for the tying basket. The pass was deflected by Mitchell through the hands of Tolbert. Good defense by Mitchell. There's number one in that family. You can be <laughs> sure of that. And they love their basketball for so many decades in that state of Indiana. Who's your hysteria? Mitchell shot, and he was fouled by, was it Risley or Tolbert? Neither man knew. I still like that old idea where they had to raise their hand. Maybe that's old-fashioned, but it certainly helped uh, everyone. They thought it was a little demeaning, Dick. Tolbert got the foul his first. But in a situation like this where there is no wave to announce it to the fans other than by the PA, if there's noise, they don't know either. And also for the official score, Dick, that's the guy that really counts. Mitchell gives LSU a three-point lead, 23-20. Both teams now have 16 fouls, so from now on, bonus will be in effect. Well, years ago, what would happen, the ref would say, you, 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 and then you'd have to raise your hand up, and it, and it got a little touchy on the ball play. Less than seven minutes remaining in the first half. 
LSU by four. Here comes that full court zone trap again. Nice job by Whitney. Whitman should get the shot off this. Now it's Isaiah. Almost lost the ball. And who's it on? Blocking against Mitchell of LSU. Good call. Fine move by Isaiah Thomas to look for the guy that was open. That zone, I tell you, is pretty well spread out. Indiana's attacking it well. Here's the play again, and it appeared uh, Grisley might have gotten away with a little shuffle before he started and picked up the foul from Mitchell, his second. One and one for Steve Grisley. All right, here we go. We got to go, too, gentlemen. He's going to call two, Dick. We give him two shots. What we've got right now, both coaches trying to work that sideline a little bit with the officials. They, if you go up against a Bobby Knight, you don't want him to get control of that sideline. Dale Brown uh, was arguing for traveling against Risley, who hits one out of two. It's 24-21, Risley's first point. He started several games during the course of the year for Indiana. Carter loses it, but Macklin alertly to pick it off. This is Cook. Way short. Whitman rebounds. Thomas. Good feed to Risley. And up it comes to Mitchell. Martin the other way. The Tigers love to run. And Martin's the man who gets them there. Carter. I see Carter. And that's the biggest lead of the game for LSU. 26-21. First points for Carter. things up a little bit, sometimes zone, sometimes man-to-man. -man. Now they're back to the man-to-man -man situation. I think Dale Brown's calling the offense right on the defense, Bill. Isaiah, oh, what a player he is. Just a sophomore and a unanimous All-America. We're going to see another consensus All-American in the second game, Ralph Sampson of Virginia against that great front line of North Carolina. Martin inside to Macklin. Boy, what a quick move by Macklin. Not there. Rebound Risley of the Hoosiers. Macklin won't be down for long, Dick. He's got that shot. He's getting it off now, feeling his position. Tolbert driving the baseline to score. And it's 26-25 as the Hoosiers come back with back-to-back -back baskets. And it's the Indiana crowd that cheers. Watch him cut right back now. 
super play. But that is Isaiah Thomas's third. I don't think he committed that particular foul. He was coming from the back. There's going to be Thomas in, Thomas out. Jimmy Thomas, number 20 from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, also a sophomore, replaces Isaiah. They are not related. Well, that's a big loss for Indiana. It's big, but not that big. Jimmy Thomas is a ball player. He has a lot of strengths. He's quick. He can post up or he can play pure guard. Ethan Martin gives LSU a two-point lead. He's looking now for his seventh point of the game. Martin just called the defensive alignment. He raised two fingers. It might be a pressing zone up court. We'll see. 30-27. In comes number 12 for LSU, Johnny Jones, and we have a timeout. The Tigers of LSU lead the Hoosiers by three. The exciting road to Philly is over for Get Brotherly Love. This is it. Tip off the 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship in prime time Monday night on NBC. 30-27, LSU leading Indiana at the 3-14 mark. Here's the foul on Isaiah Thomas. Watch him. He'll be coming from behind. Number 11. See if he gets Ethan Martin. I think he got all ball, Dick. I don't think there's a foul on him at all. It was the third foul. Mark Alcorn on the bench. The LSU Tigers. You met him in our pregame show, chatting with Brian Cumble, a man who's battling cancer and a great inspiration to his team. Dale Brown said last week he looked down the bench and Al Park was crying in happiness the last minute when LSU beat Wichita State. He said, Dale Brown said, I remembered very little after that. And of course, Brown, so very emotional in victory down in New Orleans. Smart move by Dale Brown to bring Jones in, take Martin out. Because over, he's got Isaiah Thomas on the bench, doesn't want Martin to not get a chance to rest a little bit himself. Jimmy Thomas came up with a rebound. Oops, Tolbert slipped and traveling against the Hoosiers. Tough break for Indiana. They're giving Ray Tolbert all he can eat from the outside. He has to bottom one of those out to get his confidence going. I believe, and I think Bobby Knight believes, that Ray Tolbert is probably the most valuable player in the Big Ten. Actually was fouled with a knee yep. of the LSU player. That forced him to slip. Knight, the brilliant headmaster, 39 years of age, his 10th year in Indiana. Isaiah Thomas on the bench leads all scores with 12. Martin and Mitchell have seven each for LSU. Not a good pass. Jones tried to force that one down in there. Good defense by Tolbert again. Time running out of the first half. Tolbert way off the mark. Mitchell rebounds. Almost lost it. This is Jones, the speedster from the Rudder, Louisiana. Freshman. to try to spread Indiana out. I see Carter and Whitman, Rudy Macklin and Turner. They'll be the keys. Yeah, Carter should be able to take Whitman to school. But, but Risley's uh, back there in the paint playing a one-man zone. He's drifting off the court. Number 54, Steve Bushy, a 6'8 sophomore from Washington, Indiana, comes in for the Hoosiers. Rudy Macklin grabbing that finger again, Dick. I think it's really giving him a lot more trouble than he anticipated. So that has to be painful. The finger was the dislocated and actually went through the skin, requiring six stitches. This is Macklin. I think it bothers him in catching the ball primarily. Hook did a little shuffle before he started his dribble. Indiana the other way. Dale Brown from Minot State graduated from that school in North Dakota in 1957. Surprise! He went to the delay. Yeah. Well, he said last night I was at a little party with him. He said they are going to win the national championship. Well, he is the captain of the all-time positive thinking school, is Brown. And he said third, uh, Tuesday morning he's going to run up the steps of the museum just like Rocky did. Randy Whitman, rebound, Arisley, blocked oh, play by time. Macklin. But he was out of bounds. I think they ought to clean off that floor a little bit right where uh, Ray Talbert slipped because it really is slippery down there. Somebody else going to get hurt. Dale Brown, Dr. Norman Vincent Peel after meeting Brown said, if I wasn't feeling positive before, I am now. <laughs> Back on block that, of course, with the left hand, which excellent defensive principle. 
One minute, one minute remaining in this first half. LSU 30, Indiana 27. The winner will meet the champion, uh, the second game, champion North Carolina, the uh, ACC tournament, and the regular season champion Virginia. Two three zone backed in a little bit farther now. Landon Turner, Jim Thomas. That was partially deflected by Mitchell. Here comes Jones. He can fly, and Thomas fouls him from behind. Indiana just can't get anything to drop up there around the basket area. So many close shots. And they're not getting too many garbage baskets. They got the inside position. I'll bet you they missed about 10 to 12 on the defense. Guilty of four more turnovers than Indiana. And at the line, Johnny Jones nicknamed the bullet by his coach, Dale Brown. He said, we had the pistol, Pete Maravich, and this is the bullet. Maybe the fastest man ever play at uh, LSU. Only a 50% free throw shooter. And if you're going to have a guy playing a point guard, he's got to do better than that, particularly in a delay game where he's going to have the ball off. That's where Virginia has been so strong in the tournament, where their guards shooting 90% of three guards in the tournament. Good call here by Bobby Knight. Wants to go in three down or one down. You play for the last shot, he'll take with about six seconds. Look at Whitman. Whitman's the guy on this side. Landon Turner with six seconds. Tipped by Thomas. Bushy, not there. And Macklin gets it for LSU at the end of the first half. Robert Montgomery Knight of Indiana. His team is down by three. We played the first 20 minutes of this semifinal, and we'll have a great halftime show for you. But right now, we return to our studios for these messages. crowd of over 18,000 at the Spectrum in Philadelphia traded to an excellent first half. LSU leading Indiana 30 to 27 at the intermission. Isaiah Thomas, Coach McGuire, out with three fouls the last three minutes. That's got to be a factor for the Hoosiers. Well, they got to watch that, especially because Bobby Knight does not play a zone, so they can't protect them inside the zone. Also, I believe that Indiana is playing to the wrong tempo. They're playing to the rhythm of LSU. And the third thing what Indiana has to do is start to make some of those chippy baskets. They had about 10 or 12 shots in a dick. LSU Tigers have uh, forced the opposition to play to their rhythm all season long, and I uh, think a bit surprising they've done that to Indiana in this first half. Well, I think, Dick, the matchups that we talked about, particularly with Ethan Martin on Isaiah Thomas, Ethan's been able to take him, not only the fouls, but going by him in the open court area. You don't see that happen often. I'd say LSU's got to like their position right now, not only by the, by the score, but the tempo of the game and their ability offensively to go to the boards. LSU leading Indiana by three. Let's go now to Brian Gumbel. All right, Dick, thank you very much. Very good first half. Indiana trailing by a score of 30-27, the first of four halves of basketball day as we contest the NCAA semifinals. Isaiah Thomas down on the bench with three fouls, but also an interesting half for Ray Tolbert. He's not used to being beaten on the boards. That is what LSU is doing to him, and he's also only got three points. We're going to take a look at some first half highlights, and we'll look at the NCAA tournament through the eyes of photojournalist Neil Leifer. We'll get to all of that and more right after these messages from your local station. The Bell System College Basketball Report is brought to you by Dialet National Sports. For a fast update on the national sports scene, dial 900-976-1313. We're at halftime of the first of our NCAA semifinals. LSU out in front of Indiana by a score of 30 to 27 with 20 minutes of basketball to go. The winner of this one, remember, will play the winner in the second half of our doubleheader. That'll match Virginia against North Carolina. Those of us here at NBC who have been following the tournament since it started two weekends ago have, of course, looked at it through the eyes of our television camera. Well, recently we sent Time photojournalist Neil Leifer out to take a look at BYU versus Virginia through the eyes of his still camera.
announcement was furnished by the NCAA. We're just getting started with a big day of college basketball here on NBC. The NCAA semifinals, the basketball championship, coming to you from Philadelphia Spectrum. And at halftime, the SEC champion LSU Tigers out in front of the Big Ten champion Indiana Hoosiers by a score of 30 to 27. Isaiah Thomas, Indiana's All-American guard, saddled now with three fouls. LSU stepped up the tempo early on. Ethan Martin controlling the action and getting the break going for the Tigers. The Tigers jumped out to an early lead, but Isaiah Thomas, you see, had the ball stripped right there. Ray Tolbert came through, scoring on the loose one, but Tolbert has managed only three points in the half. Meanwhile, Greg Cook shooting from outside with an 18-foot jumper tossed in six points. Thomas, with a drive right there, had very few occasions to flash that kind of brilliance for which he is known because he was saddled with his third fall with just 314 left to go in the game. And this is the way Don Olmeyer manages to get me to the Final Four every year because I tell him I get to be surrounded by beauties at halftime. But we are at halftime in Indiana trailing LSU 30-27. We've got a second half of very good basketball to come. We'll get to it right after these messages from your local station. The 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship is brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealer. We want to keep America rolling right now. By Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Put a little weekend in your week. By Hertz, where winners rent. And by Dial It National Sports. For a fast update on the national sports scene, dial 900-976-1313. Back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, both teams have returned to the court. Chance to check the official first half statistics since Bailey, our friend from Cincinnati, has worked over the numbers, and here they are. Although both teams began shooting very well, gentlemen, they both cooled off drastically. 40% for LSU and 36% for Indiana. Taking an awful lot of those shots, of course, have been that second and third effort on the part of both teams, and they just haven't been getting anything to fall in around the basket area. LSU has out-rebounded Indiana by eight, but they also have turned the ball over more than Indiana. The individual scoring also provides some interesting notes. The star, Macklin, with only four points. The big coach, uh, McGuire, Ethan Martin, not only with seven points, but seven assists. That's 14 more points for Martin. He's a great ball player. He plays with no emotion, and when you play with him as a teammate, you know you're going to get the ball off. The key statistic, I believe, in Indiana is that Whitman has only hit one out of six. There's no possible way he shoots that bad the second half. Whitman with two points. You see Isaiah Thomas with 12 and Turner with seven. Remember that Isaiah Thomas with three fouls and Ted Kitchell, another starter, with three. Dig on the other end of the court. You got Rudy Macklin two for nine. So I think whatever guy can get out of that box in the second half, either Macklin, who you know is not going to play that well, I mean that poorly for two halves. And then the other end, you've got Ray Talbert one for five. And, and you've also got Randy Whitman one for six. So somebody out of that threesome I think is going to break out in the second half. You gentlemen noted Bobby Knight did something you've never seen him do before at the start of this second half. I think, well, what he did is he circled his ball club at the foul line and he didn't give him a tongue lashing, but it seems to me that Bobby Knight's teams are very seldom out rebounded so badly, particularly off the offensive board. And I, I think there was a little lesson to be uh, learned right there. I'd have loved to have been in the center of that huddle. That huddle. Indiana will start Isaiah Thomas and Randy Whitman in the backcourt in the front line of Kitchell, Turner, and Tolbert as they started the game. And LSU comes out with Ethan Martin, Howard Carter, guard, the freshman Mitchell, the senior Macklin, and senior Cook on the front line. Willie Sims, number 10 on the sidelines. Dale Brown, 46 years of age, his first trip to the Final Four. The ribbons worn by the LSU players. Uh, Respecting the tragedies in Atlanta involving the Atlanta children. Mitchell, the freshman, is the jumper against Turner, no, against Tolbert. He got it two halves in a row. He, he's a real quick leaper. They say he's the best leaper, the strongest, and the fastest player on the team, Leonard Mitchell. That's hard to believe when you have an Ethan Martin. I see Carter's posted up. Reintroduce the players for you. Here's Martin with the ball. Isaiah Thomas on him. Howard said, Carter. As I said at halftime, it's difficult to hide Isaiah because Bobby Knight will not play zone. Here's Mitchell. He draws Tolbert. Macklin has Turner. And Cook with Kitchen. Walk. Traveling against Rudy Macklin. Macklin having a bad, bad day. 
LSU's biggest lead was five in the first half. Indiana's biggest lead was three. The game was tied five times. Inside to Tolbert. You gotta take it. But Cook playing off in three feet from yep. 12 feet away from the basket. Tolbert shut off by Cook. Mitchell, or Kitchell, a good outside shooter. Tolbert gets the rebound. That's what gets him going. He's a flamboyant player, and if he gets it dunk, he's off to the races. Five points for Tolbert. LSU's lead cut to one. Mitchell not there. Macklin saves it for the Tigers. No, they give it to Indiana. We talked about offensive rebounding by LSU in the first half. Here we see Isaiah Thomas come flying through. Tolbert picks it up, slams it through. No question that one's going down the two. Thomas was the man who cleared it free, though, for Tolbert. Isaiah only knows one way to play. That's all out. So he's a guy that can get into considerable foul trouble. He has to watch himself drive into the basket. Indiana with a chance to take the lead. Whitman back to Isaiah. Oh, knocked away by Mitchell and right back to Isaiah Thomas. Tough defense. Inside to Turner. And fouled by his own man and made the shot. Indiana leads 31 to 30. Landon Turner with nine. Big time in the game right here. LSU going to show what they're made of. They're going to come right back. Howard Carter doesn't hit it. Randy Whitman. Landon Turner was wide open. Whitman. And the fouls on Ethan Martin of LSU, his third. So Thomas and Martin both with three fouls, and Dale Brown looks at his bench. Here you have Whitman had the open shot. Good push off by Isaiah Thomas inside. There was the reach by Martin. He did get a piece of the arm. What's happening to Whitman, he's not squaring up on his shots. He's leaning towards the basket too much. I think a lot of guys are looking to pass rather than put the shot up. That happened to Kitchell the last time down also. And to Mitchell on the other end. Turner, the basket is good, and the foul on Cook. So Indiana comes out all roaring in the second half. Six unanswered points by the Hoosiers, and in two and a half minutes, LSU has not scored. Time out. Indiana leading by three. Big Ten champion Indiana with six consecutive points off the bell to open this second half. Take the lead. 33-30, shutting out LSU, and if Landon Turner can convert this three-point play, it will be Indiana's biggest lead of the game. Sims into the ball game, trying to put some offensive spark with I.C. Carter sitting down. 34-30. Four-point lead for Indiana. Sims, too long. Rebound Turner, or Tolbert. The most dangerous part of any basketball game is the first three minutes of the second half. Well, the first three minutes have belonged to Indiana. They've outscored LSU 7 to nothing. Plus, Indiana's playing more to their rhythm now. It's not as helpless skelter as it was the first half. Ted Ketchell. Tipped in by Landon Turner, and it's 36 to 30. Dick, that's the third time in this half that the ball's taken a weird bounce off the rim. Indiana playing great off the offensive boards. Got to get the ball to Macklin. See, Mitchell's not looking for his shot. He'd normally be taking that jump. There's Mitchell inside. No book. And Thomas oh, got him. Fourth foul on Isaiah Thomas. Oh, my. It's interesting to watch Bobby Knight in a situation like this. Of course, he's quickly got to go to the other Thomas. He can't take a chance this early. 
I believe that in basketball, that there never should be a, a position where a, foul, a player fouls out of a game. I believe you want to keep that ball player in the game after the fifth foul, then whoever he fouls, you get two shots, and the team gets the ball back out again. This is the only sport in America where a player is put out of the game. Hockey, you get to the penalty box so you can get back in. Greg Cook can't score, and the Tigers, hungry for a basket, have not scored in nearly four minutes of the second half. Landon Turner has, and he hits again. Sixteen points for Turner, nine in the second half. Indiana's biggest lead, and a foul against whom? Going to be on Mitchell for charging. LSU doing everything wrong. Mitchell's not taking the jump shot. He's got it. Takes one dribble too many. Gets himself in serious trouble. We'll see him right here. He's got the jump shot right there. Steady keeps on coming. Great job by Randy Whitman to be waiting on him. And that's the third foul on Leonard Mitchell. Indiana with an eight-point lead. 16 minutes to go. LSU has to get a basket. They got to get off the drought. You're on the snide. When you trouble like this, get the ball to Marklin down in the blocks. Picking up full court. Jimmy Thomas doing a good job coming back for the ball. Turner's the hot hand. He threw that one away. He's been better off shooting it than passing it. Ooh, that was a big, big turnover. Bobby Knight jumped up. Bobby Knight knew they had a run go. And timeout's been called by Dale Brown. Indiana trailing by three at halftime. Has outscored LSU 11 to nothing. And they lead by eight. That's four minutes gone. The Hoosiers red hot to open this second half. And in that 11 point run for Indiana, they build up a 38 30 lead. But plenty of time, the LSU Tigers have the ball. Sims back down on the bench. They haven't been able to get that explosive six man out of the box. Just remember, there are five great athletes out there, and they're going to make a run at you. Isaiah Thomas on the bench for Indiana with four personal fouls. Leonard Mitchell stolen by Jim Thomas, intended for Ethan Martin. I say it again, Dick. Leonard Mitchell is not looking for the jump shot. Colbert has taken away his offensive game. Here's Turner. Not a good shot. Rebound Carter. Deflected again, but Martin controls. Colbert ran himself right into a foul. That makes Bobby Knight hide his head across the way, and Isaiah Thomas anxiously awaiting a possible return soon. Oh, I won't be soon, Dick. <laughs> that will be down in about four minutes before I think Isaiah gets back in. I think I think a lot will have to do with the point spread. He's got it by eight as long as he can keep some kind of spread and keep him on the bench. Well, the point spread and the clock. Yep. Jim Thomas has had a good game in the short time he's played. Mitchell way off the top of the glass, and Mitchell's trying to do it all himself. And he's not succeeding. Freshman mistakes. Yep. Turner to Thomas. Way off the mark. Rebound, Cook. Where's he going? Give it to Macklin. Where's he going? He got away with a possible mishandling of the ball. Macklin can't get it. Carter rebounds. Five minutes. LSU has not scored the second half. Carter hits. away with a big push off down there on that rebound big push off you know what Indiana should be another six points up they've missed the last four or five easy shots the LSU scored after 505 and been played in the second half Indiana now leads by six Kitchell inside that's four that'll be four on him he thought he got the ball so both starting guards Martin of LSU, Thomas of Indiana, strapped with four. Be interesting to see that again. It looked like he did get all the ball. Well, now Dale, I don't think Dale Brown realizes that that's the fourth. We'll see it right here reaching in. What happened, Rudy Macklin didn't come across there, and Kitchell, of course, he got a part of the ball, but I think he came down with a slap. Yep, you're right, Billy. Nice uh, acting by uh, Kitchell. Jones is going to come in for Ethan Martin. Kitchell with the two-shot opportunity. He, uh, that game at Illinois early in the year, scoring 40 points, he was 18 for 18 from the free throw line, one of the great shooting exhibitions, and was six, 11 for 13 from the floor. Is that a night? Dick, you talk about shooting the ball soft. Now, right here for young kids watching this game, this is perfect technique with a one-handed foul shot. That is perfect technique. 
40 to 32. Kitchell has four points in the game. And here's Jones. Boy, he has to carry the pressure. Just a freshman is Jones. Bobby Knight with Thomas out has a little better experience as uh, Jim Thomas is a sophomore and has started some games. They've got two freshmen in the game now for LSU, so that breaks down an awful lot of their experience. Away from the ball, a foul holding on Tolbert of Indiana. There's a lot of banging going on that baseline. Three on Tolbert. You know, when this game started and I heard that Tolbert was going to play Mitchell, I was really surprised. You know, I figured that Tolbert would be on Macklin because he's such a great defensive player. But he has taken away Mitchell's entire game. He almost beat him to the spot that caught. Howard Carter with a tough baseline jumper. So Carter has all four of LSU's points in the second half. Six minutes have been played. Oh, oh they hustled on me. Turner, short, gets it back. Balls have really been coming off long on the rebounding at this end. shot that time. Everybody's been looking to pass first. That's why those shots have been coming off like ricochet. Backcourt violation. Indiana's ball. Bobby Knight will not let you reverse the ball. That's to take it from the strong side back to the weak side. If you stop a team from reversing the ball, you break all their rhythm. So how does the offensive team, in this case LSU, deny when you're trying to stop them from reversing the ball, then you've got to break someone to the basket. What you do is take the weak side man, run him along the baseline onto the strong side. John Tudor is in the game. He's a freshman from Pineville, Louisiana, number 20. That puts three freshmen in the game. This is a critical situation here for LSU. And Tudor called for a foul immediately for pushing underneath. He's an interesting story, is Tudor. Uh, the Tiger Tikes, it's been a very successful program down at LSU where they take the youngsters and they teach them all the ball handling skills. They're almost like a little Harlem Globetrotters. Well, Tudor was the first, uh, in the very first group of the Tiger Tikes, and now he's grown up and become an LSU player himself. Very Back briefly in, in the game and out. Back went back in there. You'll see him going in the zone in an out of bounds situation. You know, Brown really has to be concerned. He hasn't been able to get Macklin loose at all offensively. That's Turner's jump hook, not there. Jim Thomas with a great rebound for Indiana. Wow, did he go upstairs on that one? He's had an outstanding game. Hadn't had a lot of minutes, but he's played so well since he's come in there for, for Isaiah Thomas in the first half and now. Randy Whitman. Indiana's lead is 10 at 44-34. shortly to take a chance and bring Ethan Martin back in because he has no offensive structure right now. Yeah, you can't let it slide down too much further. They're down 10, but there's a lifetime left. There's a light year left. 12 minutes and 23 Look seconds. Look at Jimmy Thomas. Great save. Greg Cook dumping it off. Mitchell inside. Misses the layup. Rebound Tolbert. Mitchell has really had a tough second half. Well, Tolbert's such a great defensive player that he's got Mitchell shook. Indiana with a 10-point lead, biggest enjoyed by either team. Whitman free. The cheers are from the Indiana end. LSU has scored four points in over eight minutes of this second half, and Indiana has been red hot. Second game will be North Carolina and Virginia. Nobody looking for the jumper. There it is. Howard Carter, not there. Rebound, Thomas. He's only 6'3. They got to come back with Ethan Martin. No choice. Yep. Got to come back. Here he comes. Willie Sims and Ethan Martin are going to return for LSU. We're in their motion game right now. Picking down. Howard Carter knocked it away, and the foul is called. That's twice. It looks
looked like he had the ball. Well, Dick, that's the official that's working down on the baseline. The other official standing out front had a better view of it. Ethan Martin, 21 returns. Here's the play again. Here's the call, Billy. He called from the baseline. He was blocked out on that the referee. And there's the other official, of course, right there looking at it. I see Carter trying to get some help, but none to be had. Sixth team foul on LSU. Indiana has committed only three fouls in the second half. Bobby Knight wanting a two-shot foul. They're saying my man was in the act of shooting. Doesn't get it. Fortunately for Bobby Knight, his team's been able to keep that spread going with Isaiah Thomas down so he can rest him. Save him. Nine minutes have been played in the second half. Turner. There's a foul. Turner with a chance of a three-point play. Turn to get it down low too easily. They got to deny that pass in there. They got to front him a little bit. See, uh, LSU does not have a true center. Uh, Cook is not that tall. That was Cook's third foul. So both teams battling foul difficulties. Well, for LSU right now, for the next two minutes, you're going to see a test of championship heart because they're going to have to show that they can put it back up there offensively. They're all kind of mesmerized right now by a great defensive play by Indiana. Landon Turner hits two free throws. He has 18 points. And a 14-point lead now for Indiana. Sims inside to score. Willie Sims, the senior. That's only six points for the Tigers, however, in nine and a half minutes of the second half. Knocked away by Cook of LSU. like the composure Jim Thomas is showing out there. Really good leadership on his part. Come into the game in trying circumstances. Uh, he's a great player, Billy. Yep. Both his parents graduated from the Graduate School of Indiana. Here's Whitman. Martin has to be careful. Boy, Martin really keeps the pressure on with four fouls. That Kitchell. should be two. It is Ted Kitchell, 50 to 36 Indiana. Eight for Kitchell. What's happening to LSU now? They're trying to double team over on the strong side, and Indiana just throwing it right over the defense. Less than 10 minutes remaining, traveling, no basket. Willie Sims, guilty of traveling. Big thing right now, LSU should not panic. They got to realize there's 10 minutes left. Play hard, man to man. See if they can get back in the ball game. Trying to get it back, though, Al, with one-on-one -on -one play instead of getting back to their team offense. Well, I was talking more on defensive end, Bill. They got to play hard man to man. Wide open is Jim Thomas. Look, Look at him. He missed the layup, but Turner and Martin got away, possibly with a foul out of bounds to Indiana. Ethan Martin got away with it. You're right, Dick. Landon Turner hit his head on the on the rim. On the rim or the back? On the rim. Jim Thomas had it. Yeah, he really hit his head on the rim that time. <laughs> his head must be in his fingertips. <laughs> 50 to 36, Indiana. Not there. Greg Cook a rebound. Here comes Martin for LSU. Sims almost traveled again. Kitchell got in his way. Boy, well, LSU has really become disorganized, and that's a tribute to that Indiana defense. Odd nose, belly button to belly button defense. Foul on Carter, reaching around. He's posted up now by Landon Turner down low, and he's got about four inches on him, maybe five. That sends Indiana into the one and one. Third foul on Carter. Bobby Knight. We said irreverent to some, but devoutly loyal to his friends. Uh, he's a believer in principle, and uh, it's his law he abides by. That's Brad Bamba, former Indiana bass, a football grade, a doctor now, the team doctor for Indiana. Next to uh, Knight. Only a 68% free throw shooter, but Turner's been hitting them here in the second half. How many points do you have in the second half, Dick? 12, looking for 13. He's been the star offensively for Indiana. The Hoosiers now have built a 16-point lead. And another timeout by Dale Brown of LSU. All the 
cheers are from the other end where Indiana enjoys. of Virginia at the same end of the spectrum as Indiana's fans. And they joined Indiana in cheering in this intermission, perhaps trying to buy their favor in the second game. Howard Carter, not there. Tipped in beautifully by Leonard Mitchell. That is only the eighth point of the second half for LSU. They've been outscored 25 to eight by Indiana. Out of bounds, a rare turnover for the Hoosiers. And that's what they need, LSU is a run, Dick. And if they get a run going, they're right back in this game. Here's a big basket. They get the ball back to Macklin. I see Carter. Good block out by Kitchen. 52 to 38, Indiana. Jump switch by Hart too far away. Leonard Mitchell streaking in for the possible he interception. Shows, he shows some athletic ability going down that sideline. Someday he has three more years, and as I said many times, the best thing about a freshman, they become a sophomore. <laughs> you wonder, though, when you see Dale Brown, will he have three more chances? You know, coaches count their opportunities into this Final Four. There again, throwing the ball all the way cross court against his heavy double team pressure. By the way, North Carolina's Dean Smith, the sixth time in the Final Four, he sends Carolina against Virginia in that second game. Less than eight minutes left. Turner. Kitzel with a great rebound. And Turner gets it back. And finally it goes to LSU. I don't think Bobby wanted that half hook shot that Landon Turner threw up there, but he's had such a great second half. Rudy Macklin holding his finger as he came down court. There's no question that's bothered him. There you see Indiana's chances. Macklin can't hit it. And it's Kitchell knocked out of bounds by his own man. The greatest day in collegiate sports is today. And the football people and the hockey people that argue, and the reason you say is because you get not just one, but two games, four great teams, all coming in thinking they're going to win it all. Dale Brown again taking Rudy Macklin out. I think he put him right back in the ball game. I think he's talking to him about how to get a shot off. Look at Jimmy Thomas. Thomas blocks Martin. Doesn't score at the other end, however. Now it's four on two. Ooh, traveling on Sims. In fact, LSU seemed to be in trouble all the way down court. Dale Brown's team in trouble with 7.24 left, trailing by 14. Here we see Ethan Martin. Watch Jimmy Thomas. He has had a great ball game. Probably should have pulled this one back out and just kept possession for his team. Back to live action. Indiana's ball, 7 minutes and 10 seconds left. Hoosier is 52, Tigers 38. Turner into Tolbert. Landon Turner. Oh, wow. He's coming out with one more of those. Bobby Knight's going to go crazy. Foul is against. Oh. <laughs> look at Bobby Knight's going. Look at <laughs> what are you doing? He said. Well, he got away with that little half hook the last time down in court, but he's not going to let him get away with that. Well, that's a no no. That shot did no way. <laughs> Leonard Mitchell committed the foul, his fourth. Check that. It is Cook and his fourth. Greg Cook has four fouls for LSU. And Isaiah's still sitting over there, but now it's a little bit calmer situation as far as those four fouls he picked up. We talked about the depth of LSU with Isaiah Thomas on the bench. How about Indiana, the way Jim Thomas has come in? Well, I don't think LSU has that much depth, uh, Dick. I don't think they go by the seventh to eighth man. For Indiana, can go back to the tenth, eleventh man. Of course, they had so many starting lineups throughout the course of this season. They've all played a lot. They can't buy a basket. Sims gets it back. Boom, Landon Turner with a foul. He might have to take Landon out for a moment just to get regrouped. I think Landon's kind of uh, out of sync. Willie Sims, senior from Long Island City, New York, went to high school there. They call him the Black Jet. 
Here comes Isaiah Thomas back to the scorer's table. But Jimmy Thomas, will he come out? No, they're going to go with a shorter lineup. It'll be Kitchell who goes out. You might see Indiana now start to work against the clock. You got six minutes and 47 seconds, and you got a 16-point lead. So I think you look, watch them come down and try to take 30 seconds at least each time off the clock. And Al is also an advantage in bringing Isaiah back because Ethan Martin playing against Isaiah also has the four. And he's got to be a little tired being out there chasing. You've got a fresh Isaiah Thomas, and of course with this lineup, you got Randy Whitman, who's a very solid ball player, moving up to the front court. He gives them three excellent ball handlers out there. Sims barely touched the rim on that first attempt. He has four points in the game. LSU with eight in the entire second half. Oh, to relive those first two minutes of the second half. Well, he put that up hard, too. 54-39, Hoosiers by 15, time running out. Of course, you got three pretty good defensive players, and Sims, Carter, and... Martin out there playing those three ball handlers. They're spreading out. They're starting to milk the clock. They'll take the shot, but it has to be a high percentage shot. Nobody in the post now, so there'll be some backdoor opportunities here. Yep. North Carolina and Virginia, two members of the Atlantic Coast Conference, to play in the second game. Out of bounds. Touched by Martin. As you know, Virginia rallied twice from big deficits in the second half to beat North Carolina in the regular season. Can you beat Dean Smith's uh, big blue team three times? That wasn't a backdoor. That's just a cut back to the ball by Thomas. And Martin was able to come around the side but not get it all. And a timeout has been called with six minutes and 16 seconds left in this first game. LSU led most of the first half and had a three-point lead at the intermission at 30 to 27. But then a drought as Indiana came out of the locker room and scored 11 unanswered points to move into a lead that they have built consistently and now enjoy a 15-point margin. Only nine points they have scored in the last almost 14 minutes. And you know what happens? Coaches fear the droughts. Everyone goes through droughts, and it ca it's catching. One guy starts throwing the ball against the backboard, the next guy starts doing it, and all of a sudden, the rim becomes like a, a thimble, like a teacup. It just tightens up on you. They're going to try to make one last run. They don't bring this thing down to, to lower than 10 points in the next two and a half minutes. That's about all she wrote then. And you see uh, Dale Brown's team playing in foul trouble. Bobby Knight, he has some foul difficulties. Isaiah Thomas still with a four, but with a 15-point lead, uh, Bobby a bit more relaxed. Well, and he's got Jim Thomas, of course, out in the ballgame right now. He's played a great second half particularly, but was also outstanding in a short period of time. He's in the first half. Three excellent ball handlers in the game. Nobody going to be playing the low post area, so every time that LSU tries to cheat defensively, you're going to find somebody from Indiana going back door. With Isaiah Thomas scoring 12 the first half, but no points in the second half, that scoring was picked up by Turner's 13 in this half, and Kitchell chipped in with eight. 15-point Indiana lead, and the Hoosiers have the ball. Don't forget, Monday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock in the West, 1981 championship game. LSU, which usually goes zone out of bounds, had to go man-to-man -man on that out-of-bounds situation because they didn't want to get stuck back in there in the zone. Indiana's lead has really put a damper on the LSU crowd. Got Isaiah in the safety foul position. Foul on. Cook, I believe, for blocking Jim Thomas, and if it's on Cook, that's five on him, and he's gone. That's right, Greg Cook has been disqualified his fifth personal foul. He leaves the game with six points. Well, I, Dick, didn't he have four of the first six scored in the game, so he's only had two for a long, long time. Uh, Cook, a senior, May have just played his last game of college basketball. Yeah, he'll play Monday. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Of course, the consolation game. Too often overlooked, and I apologize. There'll be two outstanding teams involved in that battle for third place, they call it. And, Dick, even... you know what's tough about that when we have four teams as great as the four coming in here, that there has to be a consolation game. Somebody going to be 0-2 in this thing, and uh, as great as these clubs are, that's tough. And you can see Greg Cook, the cookie man, right there taking it tough. The line, Jim Thomas. 
We said a 10 game starter this year and a good free throw shooter. The only fellow on the team outside of the Midwest he came out of Florida. In fact, it's been Indiana, Illinois, Iowa. That's where Bobby Knight, Ohio, rather, that Bobby Knight has done all of his recruiting until Thomas and that is now pointed out because his parents are IU graduates. Sims blocked by Thomas. One it's dribble back. too many. Macklin got away with a little shuffle, or did he? I think he did. You look at his hand. His hand is really bothering him. Technical foul on the LSU bench has been called. Now, and they're not going to they're not going to give him any shots down this other end. It doesn't look like. I think what happened, the official didn't realize that it was a technical the reason for the call. There should be some shots down this way. They're going to give him. They'll give him two. Randy Whitman. That's his seventh point of the game. And Indiana continues to build its advantage. The reason why it's a two-shot technical foul is because it was against the bench or the coaching staff. Indiana by 19. So it appears the Hoosiers of the Big Ten will they're, move on to the finals. They're not going to give Macklin the shot. No, no foul was called for Macklin down the other end. And boy, he's really grimacing in pain with that finger. It's almost as if uh, if he hides it behind his back, it won't hurt so much. You saw him, he carries it behind his back every chance he can. There's been the man of the hour right here, Jim Thomas, and the key to this ballgame. Imagine having that much ability and being the sub. He's a sophomore. He's got two big years left. Indiana chewing up the clock. Tolbert. Nice play. Indiana by 21. It's become a rub. Sims again got away with a little shuffle. And Thomas rebounds. And Jim Indiana Thomas. has just intimidated them inside. And you know, this is not unlike what happened to LSU in the regional finals last year when Louisville eliminated them. LSU, in fact, has been defeated the last two years of the tournament by the eventual national champion. Michigan State two years ago. Last year was Louisville. Some may say it could happen three times in a row the way Indiana's playing. Really spreading it out nicely here. Isaiah Thomas playing in the high post. Oh, what a fake. Stolen by Sims. Off to Ethan Martin against Isaiah. Can't hit it. Another miss. No one even trying to stop it. Four, five times. Macklin gets it back. Six. Bingo. the story of the second half for LSU. And Bobby Knight says to Isaiah Thomas, we don't need any more of those passes. They just want to work the clock. It's a long afternoon on that LSU bench. Nine points in the second half. Nine points from a great team in 16 minutes of play. There's Greg Cook down the corner of your screen. He hasn't picked his head out of that towel yet. Well, right now, Terry Holland and Dean Smith are pacing the floor inside their locker room, somewhere inside this building getting ready to make their appearance for the second game. North Carolina, Dean Smith, they've been here before five times, but Carolina under Smith never winning the national championship. You stopped him once in the final game in 77. John Wooden beat him in another final. So Dean Smith against Terry Holland. His Cavaliers have never been to the final four. 75 years Virginia never got here. That's our second game. And we're going to watch potentially the greatest basketball player in America. Not there yet, but the next couple of years he definitely will be. Uh, Ralph Dick Sands. Isaiah Thomas, no harm, no foul. He was going to throw that one behind his back. Play walk. Sims walks again as he has done often in this second half. Isaiah Thomas, we had our cameras isolated on the brilliant sophomore All-American, number 11. He went back door, and when he realized the man was there, I think he was going to try to throw that behind his back and couldn't get the handle. No charge called on the play. It seems that Indiana turned around in late December when Bobby Knight made Isaiah Thomas the captain. He gave him more freedom and responsibility. Now, McGuire, how can a team as outstanding as this LSU team turn so terribly cold? I mean, that's just... Hard to believe for their fans that in 
Well, they got 2.59 left that they could score nine points. In well, the what second happens half. is catching Dick. That's the first three minutes of that second half to all you grade school and high school coaches. It's such an important time. You're coming out of that locker room, you don't warm up properly. I still believe at halftime, coaches, uh, teams should form warm up lines and start to get the light sweat. We used to always come at you real hard the first three minutes of the second half defense because defense starts right away. I think one of the other key things that happened here that LSU never got back into their rhythm, the faster rhythm over 94 feet. Bobby Knight finally got him into a 47-foot game or a 43-foot game, half court, stay with the rhythm, and slowly blowing him out. And now he knows he had the game the last couple of minutes. He's been Mickey Mouse in the clock, trying to get his guys to the foul line in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's been very frustrating for LSU. They're a great ball club, great athletes. It just was not their particular day. Randy Whitman just left with eight points and obviously that thigh injury didn't bother Whitman at all. Glenn Grenwald has replaced him. Leonard Mitchell. I see Carter. He drops one in the well. He's the only one who has really scored for LSU in the second half and has 10 in the game. 60 41 Indiana two and a half left. Number 22 Jay Brian Bergeron is in for LSU. That's Grunwald. Grunwald's a guy that's made a great contribution to this club. He was probably one of the most highly recruited athletes in all the country when he was in high school, but those knee problems taken away what would have been certainly a great collegiate career. He says, I like to contribute whatever I can to this team. Now, you see a shot like this, fans, where they're all spread out. They're trying to isolate, and they're moving on the weak side of the court. When a ball player turns over a ball, he usually turns it over because of someone else's defensive man, not because of his. You must keep your defensive man busy on the weak side of the court. Landon Turner goes out. Steve Risley replaces him, and Turner was the star for Indiana in the second half and leaves with 20 points. Scores his first point of the second half. Looking now for number 14 on the game. And Isaiah now will come out as he is replaced by number 31, Tony Brown. So Indiana survives without the full service time of their All-American Isaiah Thomas as Jim Thomas, again, not related, played brilliantly in his relief. Indiana matchup against the two teams we'll see next. I think a lot depends on which one of those wins because uh, Samson makes you do certain things that the North Carolina front line but might do something else with them. You've got to remember what Ralph Pick Samson. He puts a pink elephant in the back of your head and every ball player that ever plays against him, that elephant grows as the game goes on. Ralph Samson just has to stay down in the paint and you just keep thinking of that pink elephant in the back of your head. <laughs> Who's going to be the most valuable player? I would hardly call Ralph Samson a pink elephant, but I know what you mean. He really does make you think down there. Most valuable player as Grenwald hits the free throws. We're having a little debate out here, and I think for the first time this year, we're going to split. Indiana will get the $1,000 for its general scholarship fund in the names of two players. So often that valuable reserve is not paid as proper tribute. Tudor is fouled. So Indiana, Cole, most valuable players, Landon Turner for his great offensive play, and Jim Thomas because his superb control play off the bench was certainly instrumental in the second half. So Jim Thomas, Landon Turner, our co-MVPs today. Well, we all talked about Willie Sims being such a dynamic force for LSU coming in the game. We never gave Jim Thomas the credit that uh, possibly he could come in, but I thought he was so cool under the pressure coming in there. And when you know you've got a guy like Isaiah Thomas with four fouls, you know you're going to have to come in and play 15 minutes or so. A lot of pressure. Tudor hits the free throw. He's a freshman from Pineville, Louisiana. In the history of this great tournament, this is the 43rd NCAA championship. UCLA won it 10 times. Kentucky has won it five. Indiana, three in second place, or the third place, so with a fourth chance apparently here in 1981 to win it again. They won it.
as we said, in 1940, 1953, and again under night in 1976. And they won it here in this building, the Spectrum. Yeah, they beat us on the way here. We played them in Baton Rouge, surprisingly, where LSU was located, and they knocked us off. We had four or five guys uh, on our starting team go to pro ball. This whole five went to pro ball. I believe, Dick, that that team of Indiana in 1976 was the third best team in the history of collegiate basketball since the 50s. Yeah, it was a marvelous team with Scott May and Quinn Buckner and Benson, Benson inside, Wilkinson. Oh, they could do it. Abernathy, they all went on to pro ball. Tudor of LSU with a minute and a half remaining. The second big game to follow. Reserve times now. Number 43, Mike LaFave, a freshman, got that rebound. Chuck Franz. This is Tony Brown. Rebound to Jones. 63-43, Jones trying to dump off, and he is fouled. Stops the clock with 108 remaining. At the half, in case you join us late, this man's team, Indiana, Bobby Knight's team, was trailing 30-27. Dale Brown's club played very well the first 20 minutes. And the first three minutes is McGuire's wisdom, again, uh, reflected. You can't come out that cold and not pay the price. LSU has had a miserable second half and will taste the feet to this Indiana team. Well, they've had a great year. It's a shame in basketball, the NCAA, that there's only one winner. There's 47 teams that leave the tournament unhappy. But then about two or three weeks later, they start realizing, hey, we had a great season. This team won the Southeastern Conference, and they, they have built a dynasty down there where Kentucky has governed it for 30, 40 years with the great Rupp and Joe B. Hall. LSU, indeed. It's a matter of put getting that second half together. That's what happened to them last year. A tough second half when Louisville ran them out. Yes, they made it one step from the Final Four. And this year in the semifinals, it's the smiles of Indiana versus the yeah, look, sorrow of LSU. Yeah, look at that. You know, they amateur sports, you know, you got you got the one guy over there that's that's heartbroken. He feels so small he can play handball against the curve. The other guy at the other end, he's so high, he's climbing Mount Everest. He's skying. The other chant, UVA. The Virginia fans are warming up. And Carolina answers from the other end of the spectrum. 40 seconds left. Eisenbarger unable to connect. And following was Grunwald for Indiana. Add some frosting. 65-47. 20 seconds left. Jones a bomb. Misfired by LSU as the Tigers having their troubles right down to the final gun. Seven seconds. Five. And a whistle in the backboard. A foul on Bergeron. Bobby Knight. Some say the smartest coach in the college game. He's very good, Dick, when he has time to prepare. You'll blow your socks off. I'm going to share this with our audience. We're flying uh, out of uh, Baton Rouge or New Orleans last uh, week, and Al McGuire, we we're sitting in the car, and he said, you know, if I'm going to play Bobby Knight, I'd like to play him Monday night, not just because that's the championship, but because he has only one day to prepare. Heaven forbid when you give Knight six days to get ready, and his team came in well coached and certainly ready for this uh, outstanding performance. If today. he had a choice, he said many, many times, he'd rather coach in practice than coach the game. I was just the opposite. I like the game. I like the charisma. I like the excitement. I like the SRO. Standing room only. Franz gets two points here in the final four. And that'll be a thrill for that young man from Clarksville, Indiana. Two seconds left. Don't forget you people in Baton Rouge had these guys in the back. They had a great season. But the victor, Indiana. And Bobby Knight goes to the championship game again. The only man to win both as a player and as a coach in the NCAA championships and a chance to make it two for him in two and five years both in Philadelphia. One of his things that he's so famous for saying is that your opponent is yourself, your potential. He does a couple of things well. 
He also won the NIT a number of years ago, won the Commissioner's Conference, so he touched every base in basketball. And the second game, obviously, Dean Smith is, I think he's breaking out a little bit of a heat mesh. I really think there's pressure on Dean Smith. Now, sometimes you win the championship, as you all know, Al McGuire, with a not your greatest team. Maybe this is just Carolina's year. Although Samson and Virginia say, uh-uh. We'll be right back. Indiana goes to the finals, a win over LSU. Broadcast to bring you a new Center 13 sports update. Here now, sports director Don Hine via satellite from Philadelphia, where the Indiana Hoosiers have moved into the NCAA Finals. By satellite from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Jerry Harkness, Don Hine here. It'll be Indiana and North Carolina for the national championship come Monday night. Quickly, your impressions on that game, Jerry. Obviously, it's going to be a strategy. We got a good coach in Dean Smith and our best, Bobby Knight. I think it'll go down to the wire with the Hoosiers winning it all. IU is really playing tremendously, as you well know at this time. However, in the first half of today's game with LSU, they were not playing too well and only down by three at the half. After the ball game, Jerry Harkness talked with Coach Knight about that very thing. Well, I'm not sure we we're playing bad, Jerry. We didn't put the ball in the basket, and, and there's a difference. We played well enough to, to exert some, some defensive pressure and played fairly well defensively. Uh, we had some shots that we hurried, uh, some shots that we should have made, I think, that we just hurried. We made a couple of quick errors on offense, and if we could get that settled down, then we might have been up seven, eight points at the half. IU and North Carolina, as you well know, have played once already this year. And North Carolina won that game, Jerry. Do you think that makes any difference here? No, I don't. Both teams have improved, but without a doubt, IU have improved tremendously. They have the bench strength, and that is the key to their victory this coming Monday. Really, two different teams have played each other earlier in the year. That's right. That doesn't matter. As far as NCAA is play, nothing matters. It's who is the best at that time. Okay. Don Hine, Jerry Harkness, look for us later tonight here on Channel 13. On News Center 13 at 11 o'clock, we'll have the full story with interviews with all the club and Coach Knight. We'll see you then. This has been a special News Center 13 sports update brought to you via satellite from Philadelphia. Join News Center 13 update at 11 for more satellite coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers as they move on to the NCAA Finals. We now return to our regularly scheduled broadcast.